Hi, I'm Claire and welcome to the very first video of 2020 here on my channel. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you had a lovely Christmas or Hanukkah if you celebrate those. I hope you had a lovely break anyway. I have just come back from my parents' house and now I am filming this video that I'm so, so, so excited for because it is the first installment of a brand new TBR game here on my channel. That's right, we're going to do a little game to decide what it is that I'm going to be reading this month. Over the past year, I've suddenly come to really, really enjoy like really complex TBRs with a lot of prompts and challenges. So we are going to just roll with that quite literally because this TBR game is kind of roughly based on Dungeons and Dragons with the caveat that I haven't actually played D&D since university, but mostly I just wanted to buy some really cool dice that I could use in a TBR game. So we have some very beautiful dice that we're going to be rolling with today. I'm super excited about it because look at how beautiful it is. So let's play our very first round of Read for Initiative. The way this is gonna work is I have a base number of books that I want to try and read every month and then I'm going to roll to see if I have to read a few more or a few less than that. A few fewer than that? Eh. And then I'm going to roll to figure out how many reading prompts I need to fulfill in any given month and then I'm going to roll to figure out what these reading prompts actually will be. I have a couple of side quests that I will get to as we are playing. Also because I could not resist the idea of being a halfling rogue. I'm basically a hobbit anyway and rogue just sounds cool. I have also made up bonus points and extra skills and capacities for those things as well. Naturally, once I'd made myself a halfling rogue, I also made a bunch of other classes and races as well. So, you know, at some point I'm hoping I can release all of the rules in a printable PDF for everybody to enjoy as well as me. But right now they might be a little clunky. I made changes to this this morning. So I'm going to play a few <laughs> rounds worth of this first to see how it goes and see if there are any tweaks that need to be made. But let's not worry about printables and sharing it with people yet because that feels like putting a cart before the horse. Let's play our first round. Now my base reading goal is five books a month because I would like to read 65 books in the year divided by 12. That's five and a bit so I've rounded down to five. I'm assuming that I'm gonna end up reading more than five books a month with this game. Like it's going to give me more than that to read or it's going to allow me to pick more than that to read because of all the reading prompts. So first up I'm going to take a d12 and roll for constitution and see if this month I'm up to just five books, more than five books or less than five books. So let's get started with our very first roll. And that's a seven. That's actually not too bad of a roll according to my table. A seven is no change. That means I should read five books this month. That's a pretty good roll. I mean, it's average. So I am going to keep this roll. Now the reason I'm talking about keeping this roll as if re-rolling were even an option is because I'm playing as a halfling rogue character and I have gone ahead and given like skills and abilities to all of the different races and classes that I've put in my game. So for me right now as a halfling I get this skill lucky which means that I can re-roll one dice per month. Now that I've got a goal for how many many books to read this month. We are going to move on to reading prompts. First up, I'm going to roll for initiative to see how many reading prompts I feel like taking on this month. And this roll I'm going to be doing with a d20 purely because I wanted to use my new shiny d20. And we've got a 14. So 14 in my chart is plus four prompts and that's also on a base of five, I don't know if I'm going to keep a base of five in future or change it, uh, but basically 
right now the dice says that I have to try and do nine reading prompts this month which I don't think is very bad at all because you can kind of combine some of them together and also because I would like to start the year strong with reading books from my TBR which is one of my goals and side quests that I'll talk about more uh, at the end of the month when I score all of this with a bunch of points because honestly it feels like a bit too much to explain in just one video I've worked on this really hard but I feel like I'm messing up explaining it to you so we're gonna do just the TBR for now and then we're gonna look at scoring in February when I have finished my reading and we see how I go. And now of course we've got to come up with these nine prompts and the way we're going to do that is with random encounter tables that I have filled with reading prompts. I've got a d6 to figure out which of three table I'm going to be picking from. I started off by thinking that I might make six of the tables but with over 20 prompt per table it was just a little bit OTT for the first month so if I roll a one or a two I'll go to the first table if I roll a three or a four I'll go to the second table if I roll a five or six I'll go to the third table and then I've got two d10s one of them goes from zero to nine and one of them goes from zero to ninety in increments of ten so when you put the two of them together you have a number between 0 and 99 which is what I need to be rolling on these beautiful tables that I made. First up we have got 5 for the table and then we've got 10 and 3 so prompt number 13 on that read in my reading nook so that's one of my easier prompts that I've got. I've kind of tried to arrange them in an easy to difficult kind of pattern from low to high numbers but it does not matter because I don't believe this dice has any more probability to you know fall a particular way than anyway it doesn't matter first up I'm going to read in the reading nook so that's a circumstantial one rather than a what type of book to pick so I can apply to any of the book for roll number two we've got four that's the second table to pick from and then we've got 51 and at number 51 we have read a historical book that one's hard or you know it's not hard it's just not something that I thought that I would do this month so read something historical I'm gonna have a little look at the TBR shelf that is right next to me and see if there's anything historical on there. I think I have a few options. So right off the bat I can see two books that could sort of fit this prompt. They are both historical fantasy but also I literally don't have a straight up historical novel or work of nonfiction in this stack. I do actually have a nonfiction book about female serial killers that I'm pretty sure is partly historical so I could read that if we want to be really strict about whether or not this should be actually historical let me know how you feel about this in the comments below because otherwise I've got two options there is The Girl From Everywhere by Heidi Heilig this is time travel and it's about time traveling pirates if I recall correctly it says a journey through time a journey to love on the front cover and I've heard a lot of good things about this one so that's an option there is also soul bones by Katherine Johnson and this one is kind of steampunky London-y digging up corpses and other goodness like this so I'm quite interested in this one. I also know that I have a review copy of a book coming in really soon from a publisher that is a lame is retelling and I'm not sure if that's modern or if it's historical I'll have to check. So let me know in the comments below if you think it would be okay for me to read either of those two or if I should go for Lady Killers. Deadly Women Throughout History by Tori Telfer with illustrations by Dame Darcy. Either of those three right now is what I've picked. I'm going to have to see if any of them combine with some of the other prompt and that might nudge my decision uh, one way or the other but uh, let's ha let's have a chat in the comments about whether historical means straight up historical or historical fantasy historical sci-fi that kind of thing roll number three is all over the place there we go so roll number three is a number five which is the third table once again and this one is 93 which is quite high up so it should be a bit 
difficult. 93 is actually read your latest purchase, which I guess I marked it as difficult because it's something that doesn't leave you a lot of wiggle room. It's one book, but I'm not actually sure what my latest purchase was specifically. Okay, so I'm not actually sure what the last book that I myself went out to buy in the bookstore was, which I guess means that I'm doing okay with not buying too many books these last few months. Uh, what I'm gonna go for instead is Blood Air by Amelie Wen Zhao, and this one came in my December Lumicrate, so it is the last book that I've paid money for, even though I didn't pick it, I did purchase it, if you will. I have a uh, prompt in the table for read a book that came in a subscription box, but I'm also gonna get an Illumicrate box in January with two books in it, so I'm not too worried. If that space comes up, then I'll just have to read one of the two books in the upcoming crate. So this one with its wonderful, wonderful bloody sprayed edges, I'm going to try and read in January, and this one is about a princess who has magical talents that she should not have, I believe, or that she is going to be reviled for if it's ever found out. I think she's being framed for a murder and she has to run away. Let's do rule number four. And this one is table number three again because we've got that six and it is also number 36. So 36 in the third table is read a book by a favorite author. Now none of the books that I've got picked out so far are by a favorite author because none of them are by authors that I've read before. So I can't double up on a prompt but I know exactly what I'm gonna read because I have got a review copy of Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire from Ned Galley. Shauna McGuire is a favorite author of mine. Come Tumbling Down is out in like, what is it, two, three days at this point? I need to be reading it right now, so this is perfect. I was looking for an excuse to get it on the TBR so I could read it tonight, so I am over the moon about that. For roll number five, we've got, out of the second table, 33, and 33 in the second table is read a book with red on the cover, and this is where we are starting to combine prompts very nicely, because of course, Blood Air has a lot of red on the cover, so that's what I'm going with for red on the cover. Very good. Roll number six, we've got in the third table again. I did not get almost any roll from the third table when I was doing my trial run, but this is the what, fourth one in the third table, this go round, and it is 49, which is read a Ned Galley arc. Again, we're doubling up because I was already planning to read a Ned Galley arc that was Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. That being said, I have a bunch of other great Ned Galley arcs for February, and I'd love to get a little bit ahead. So I might read Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey or Finna by Nino Sipri because both of them are short than novellas and I as a rogue get extra bonus points for reading short books. So actually I think I'm gonna put Finna by Nino Sipri on the TBR for this month just so I can get a little bit ahead with my Ned Galley reviewing and I'm so excited for this novella. It's the one that's set in a big box furniture store where two of the employees end up having to rescue this little granny from an interdimensional portal that she got lost in that just opened up in the middle of the Ikea that they work in and of course they have just broken up like a week before the story starts so there's tensions running amok. So we've got three rolls to go and I've just put a new battery in the camera so hopefully that'll last me until the end of this video. Let's roll the dice again. There's 44 in the first table, and that is read a book with yellow on the cover. Now, that one was a little bit tricky because none of the books that I've picked so far have got yellow prominently on the cover. What I've gone for instead is this, The Con Artist by Fred Van Lenta. This is a novel about a murder at a comic con. It says on the back, the comic book industry can be murder. As you can see, the back is a lot more yellow 
so is the spine and there's a bit on the front as well I know nothing about this author I know that this book is quite short it's under 300 pages and it's written fairly big in there uh, and there are some illustrations as well so I'm hoping I can go through this one fast enough and I picked it up because I'm generally interested in reading books that are about fandom or that take place in a fandom so this is kind of like a more of a general interest of mine and that's why I picked it up but I have no idea who this author is I've not heard about this book anywhere on booktube before I just kind of was looking for fandom books and ended up picking this up so we'll have to see how this one goes next up we have in the second table number 43 and that is to read a book between 300 and 400 pages now let's see how long blood air is because i think it might be more than 400 and everything else that i have so far is less than 300 so that might be a determining factor for which of these three i'm going for from uh, back in the second prompt to read a historical novel this is definitely over 400 pages so it wouldn't go for that prompt let's have a look at the girl from everywhere that is 342 pages so bones is 230 pages so it is out and lady killers is just over 300 pages however that just over 300 pages is made up of notes and stuff the actual book finishes at page 270 so I don't think that can count so I'm going to say that the girl from everywhere by Heidi Heilig goes for the prompt to read a book between 300 and 400 pages if you think that it's okay for it to also go for historical let me know in the comments and if it's not okay for it to go for historical I will find something else and for our final role today we've got 70 in the first table now 70 in the first table is to read a net galley arc because i've got some duplicate prompts because i haven't come up with 25 prompts times three yet so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use my right to reroll one dice which i do have as a halfling i can reroll only one of these three die and i think my best option uh, is probably to re-roll this one, the one for the like numbers because above 70 it's gonna be a different prompt so let's do this. Uh, 71 and that is a different prompt it's very close it is read a review copy but that to my mind is different from read a net galley arc because a review copy would be a physical review copy and for this one I am going to try and read the unlikely escape of Uriah Heep which is a book by H.J. Parry that I have just received for review from Orbit Books. I believe this came out last year in the US but it's just coming out now in the UK. In any case it's the review copy, the physical review copy that I've received the most recently. I'm very very excited about it. I mean as you can see from the fact that the cover is a library and actually specifically I believe that's uh, the long room library in Dublin that I visited when I went to Worldcon so that's pretty exciting to see on a book cover but it is about a uh, character called Charlie Sutherland uh, who has concealed all of his life an unlikely ability he can't quite control he can bring characters from books into the real world so I'm very excited about this one it is maybe a little bit long for adding a like six book into my TBR for this month but I'm very excited for it and I would like to prioritize it because it's new and because the other review copy that I know I'm about to receive the one that's a Lee Miz retelling even though I'm really really excited about it it comes out much later so I'm going to go with this one first so at the end of this first round of read for initiative we've got five books minimum to read in January we've got nine reading prompts to fulfill I am going to first spend some time in my lovely reading nook which is just off camera you can't see I am going to read Blood Air by Emily Wen Zhao because that's the last book that I purchased and it's got red on the cover I'm going to read The Con Artist by Fred Van Lente because it's got yellow on the cover 
I'm going to read The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep by H.J. Parry because it's a review copy and also The Girl from Everywhere by I.D. Heilig because it has got between 300 and 400 pages and also maybe for historical but if you don't think it counts for historical I will definitely pick up some historical non-fiction. I will check on the poll and the comments later this month and see how to go. I've also got two ebooks from NetGalley to read this month. First up is Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire to read a book by a favorite author and next up is Finna by Nino Cipri to read a Ned Galley arc. So that's six books total with maybe an extra historical book chucked in there and that is four books from my TBR shelf which is rather exciting because one of my goals with this game is uh, to make sure that I actually read from the TBR shelf. I am going to lose points if I let more books come onto the TBR shelf than come off the TBR shelf either from being read or from being on hold and I know for a fact that five more books are coming onto the TBR shelf this month. So if I read just those four books this month I wouldn't lose that many points and I wouldn't mind so so much but if I want to make sure that I don't lose points at all this month, what I could do is pick up one of the comic books that I've got on my physical TBR and specifically uh, I would love to check out Rick and Morty Volume 1. This is, uh, well, created by Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland, of course, the show is. And the comic book is written by Zach Gorman, illustrated by CJ Cannon and colored by Ryan Hill. The show is back on at the minute. We We've already watched the five episodes out, out right now. We loved them. The dragon one was of course my favorite one because it like made fun of all my favorite dragon things and it was delightful. Um, and yeah, this, this might be just an addition to the TBR because it's so short uh, and it would just be the work of an evening. So that's it. That's the TBR for January. In the end, I am pretty chuffed with it. I'm very excited to dig into all of these things. I'm delighted that it's so varied uh, but a little bit daunted by the size of it. That being said I'd be very happy to start the beginning of 2020 with a good dent in my Goodreads challenge and that would certainly certainly do it if I read six or seven or eight books this month if you decide that I need to also read a historical thing. This is such a fun experiment. This video has taken so long to film. I think it's gonna take a while to edit as well. I hope that you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments below because I've had a blast coming up with this entire system and writing a bunch of prompts and figuring out like how it's gonna work and how I'm gonna score it. And next month's Read for Initiative video might be even longer because I've got to score the points for all of these once I have read them and I also need to think of what rewards I can give myself when I level up because I'm certainly gonna level up with all of this. If you'd like to see more from me you can check out a previous video on screen right now and if you haven't yet please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.